the walk of shame. Let's give him a round of applause, actually, guys. All right, can we get a microphone up here? Can we get a microphone? Test it, test All right. What's up, guys? All right. Why were we late? We were late because God put something on my heart. We don't take the time to truly see one another. And the moment that me and him took the time to see one another is when we started to see truth. So yeah, I wanted to come back here and be a leader and stand up and be on time. But this man's soul was more important to me in truth. Okay. Is that good? Yeah. Okay. Why are we late? Um, have you ever searched for something and all the answers just seem to come out of nowhere at a weird time? That's, that's sort of the experience that I had where I just was like, hello, how you doing? How's the event? And then it just, it turned into something a lot more than I expected just from a simple hello. So what was the conversation? Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. What about Jesus? When we hide, it's because we have to hide the parts of ourselves that are ashamed. And if we're afraid of being too much, we do that by knowing more knowledge. But Jesus is the peace that transcends all understanding. So what was your guys' conversation? Not what... This is... This, this is... Okay. This is so what sparked this conversation? Um, he said that he was traveling in from... Vancouver. And Vancouver. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I asked him what he, what he does for, for uh, a living. And he says he counsels... Uh, anxiety and, okay. and then I sort of just led into that okay so before we left the room though what was the commitment that we made be on time okay that's a great conversation that's a good conversation it sounds like there was in depth but what was the agreement that we made 1150 that was 1150 yes it was okay so the, again what's the difference between an excuse and a reason because it's a great reason but what does it also cause with that reason? The excuse of being late. The excuse of being late. Okay. And I, and I get this. Like, I, I resonate with what you guys are saying. Do you know how many sessions I get into? The last, the 58th minute is when they start opening up to me. They open Pandora's box and I'm like, why didn't we talk about this minute too? But if I carry on that conversation, which is very much really needed, what does that do to the next meeting or my time? Because you know what I do? You know what I do because of this? It bleeds into my time, my son's time, my friend's time. And now I have to make excuses to them. And I do the same thing. I go, but they needed me in that moment. This is kind of interesting. We're, we're talking about Jesus, but I think sometimes we have this Jesus-like complexion about ourselves. Like we have to sacrifice ourselves for other people. Okay, you're not Jesus, guys. Let me remind you. Okay, you don't need to suffer the sins of someone else. You don't need to die on the cross. You don't need to lose money. You don't need to do these things for other people. Okay, I will never tell you what to sacrifice, ever. I will tell you what there needs to be invested into it, okay? So great conversation. What I would have said is let's continue this conversation because we made an agreement to ourselves. We, we committed because, and again, this is probably one of the greatest reasons, excuses I've heard on the stage, okay? Someone mentioned sometime, one time that they had a issue down here and they needed a tampon and because it was like, I was like, that's a great reason too. Okay, but again, you're gonna find the reasons. You're gonna find the excuses. And, and the myth I think is, the myth that we hear is showing up is half the battle. 
Well, I'm pretty sure if I go to the gym and sit on the bench press the whole time and play on my phone, that ain't going to give me 50% more gains in muscle, is it? Okay, so showing up is not half the battle. Showing up is the first 1% but I can't get to 100% if I don't get that first 1%. So showing up, although it's important, it's not half the battle. It's the, four, that's the first important piece of the battle to begin. Okay, does this make sense to you guys? And literally what it comes down to, and again, I love the conversation, mostly what it comes down to when we're trying to be on time is just like, dude, you gotta hurry. You gotta put a little pep in your step. Like, you got to get on your horse. So that's what we're going to practice. Getting on our horse. Can we get the horses out? So each of you are going to get a horse. Okay, I want Pinky. Okay, before you, before what we do, we're going to have a competition. You guys are going to race. Okay, and what you're going to do, when the music goes, okay, when the music goes, you're going to race. And so you're going to go <laughs> like you're actually racing. Let's go, baby. We got to be somewhere. Let's go. And you guys are going to vote. Whoever you think's winning the race, you're going to point at. Okay. It's you guys versus each other. Okay. Who's going to win? <laughs> who's going to win? Let's see. Ready? Go. Yep. Let's go. So pause for a second. So what's going on? He's doing the same thing. Man. What? Taking the time to see one another is more important than riding a horse. Okay. So let, let's break this down a little bit. Does he have a point here? Okay. And I'm not doing it because it's the same thing. It's the same thing when you shush your child. I am not going to pretend like I don't see an individual and ride a horse. So the and I'm not being disrespectful. I'm being truthful in love. Okay. So let's, let's talk about this for a second. What was the agreement you made before we went to lunch, before we went to break? To be back on time. Okay. So you made that agreement to you, to people in this room, and then you made that agreement to me. Okay. Now, in the context of what happened with this, it sounds like it was a deep conversation, and I'm not taking away from that conversation. Okay. Not taking away from the conversation. I'm not saying he's not important, and I'm not saying what you had to say isn't important. Okay? Do you agree with that? If you're going to make me ride a horse in turn of it, yes, I disagree. Okay. Because you're making it more important. Okay. What the context of the conversation is, okay, is you made an agreement. You broke the agreement, though, okay, yeah. when you showed up late. So you showed that you're not important and you said that I'm not important. So in the context of this, other two things were broken. No, you know what I showed? That Jesus is more important. Okay. So is that what you're going to stand by? 100%. I love you. So, so Jeff, what do you do? I help people discover the peace and joy of Christ. Okay. And peace is presence too. Okay. You're strong willed. And I appreciate that. I appreciate the strong thing. And I know you're not trying to be disrespectful. That's not your intention. However, we talked about this earlier, the four levels of intention. It's intention, your understanding, did you perform, and what's the influence? So let's take away whatever happened. Whatever happened, you walked in late. No, 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 that's not the conversation. The conversation is you made a commitment, something happened, and you walked in late. 
Yep, so where else are you choosing to show up late because you're getting sidetracked with something else? Where else are you breaking commitments in your life because you deem this is more important in the moment? Okay, and which commitment are you breaking to yourself that's the most important? Okay, in what category? In what area are you not putting yourself first? So you said that I'm showing up late for myself in loving myself. Is that what I heard? Or did I hear that differently? Yeah. Okay. I put someone else before myself. Okay. How else would we define love? Because the first words out of your mouth were taking the time for someone else. So by your true definition of love, you were loving in that moment. But do you feel like there's a better definition you can come up with that would be serving for you and for him? And while you're thinking, and I really do admire you for thinking, I think you're taking inwardly. Look at it, and I appreciate it. Okay, the ego coming at me earlier, I didn't appreciate as much, but I appreciate that we're actually taking an inward look right now, so thank you. Okay, how many years have you been coaching? Eight, Eight years. Okay, full time? Okay. And have you ever had someone pull you out into a conversation and dump on you and it affected you elsewhere and other things and took away from other commitments? Yeah, it's the coach's journey. And if you've been coaching at least that long, of course that's going to happen. And you, the, your very strength is actually hides your weakness. Because your strength is you actually cared to have a conversation with him, right? You, you took the time to care and that's your gift. So you probably saw that out very easily. But your very gift hides your very weakness which is now it pulls away you from your commitments and from what you came here to do you came here to show up for yourself to become a better leader yeah. and, this is part of it. and this is and this is part of it and yeah. the, the goal like when i have you do the horse and i should have given more context to this the goal of this is not to embarrass you the the goal of this is to look at something reflect on something and go, you know what, how could I have moved through this conversation faster so I could have served him, myself, the people in the room, and everyone putting on it. And so that's what the horse represents, okay? And also what this represents is this represents a way for you to not look at this thing and shame and beat yourself up, but just look like, yeah, I just need to move faster. And what I love about this event is it's fun and you're going to do things that are uncomfortable. Okay. And if you can do things in a, an environment where everyone's kind of chosen into that belief system, like, yeah, let's kind of set our egos aside and everything. And let's just kind of choose into this and play fall out. And what you're going to notice is you start to do those things is you're notice that this is going to start to domino effect into other parts of my life unconsciously because I was in an environment that I gave myself permission to let go. And for whatever reason, it started to impact my central nervous system a little bit differently. And now when I show up on Monday or Tuesday, I don't know, there's just kind of this different pep in my step that I really just can't really give a conscious answer to other than I feel differently. And so dynamic meditation, we're going to be doing a little bit later today. And that changed my life. It looked stupid, it looked dumb, it looked hippie and yogi-ish, but it was something that, from a scientific standpoint, really made a lot of sense. Okay. What are you, what are you taking away from this conversation that we're having so far? Delegate my time more, and also to not um, always sacrifice myself for others. I see that now. Yeah. And, and you'll do that. And we, we, we say it's being, we say it's what leaders should do. But then how many other people did we affect? And that was a good comment earlier. How many other people did we affect by, by not being on time and not committing to ourselves? Right? Because you have a lot to give and you have a lot of passion. I love the, the man bun. I'm a little jealous. There's, n <laughs> there's no way I can go through the awkward stages of that to get there. So, uh, yeah. yeah, but I do admire the, the man bun on some level. You're a good looking guy. You got a lot of passion, right? And you stand up for what you believe. Yeah. And that's important. 
And I know that um, Jesus and that spiritual side is an important part of your life because it sounds like that helped you in so many areas. In everything. In everything. So you want to pass on something that has helped you so much. Yeah. Okay. Don't forget about you. I had this one session years ago. This lady really just was... It was almost like an argument. Yeah. She was in my office for three hours, dude. Not even kidding. She was in my office for three hours. After she left, I went into my bed and I laid there and cr started crying because it was so intention of, it was so much emotional exchange. And in the context of those three hours, I lost two hours and nothing was achieved in the meantime. And so in, in coaching, time is, is really of your essence to achieve and help a lot more people. Yeah. Okay. Can we give them a round of applause, guys? So let's, let's come over here, okay, have a conversation. Okay, so what are we, what are we taking away from, the, the, from this conversation on this side? what I've really learned in my journey as a coach is if I'm not respecting other people's time, then I'm not respecting my time either. And so, yes, it's cool that someone is willing to give me all that more time, but if I'm not respecting his time, then I can't respect my time when I go to pass this on to the next person. Because now I've just learned from him that it's okay to break these rules and to go over time. And so now I've almost been influenced to take on the same thing for the next person. Does that make sense? But there's a lot of great things there. And one of the great things I think there is, is you're open. And that's really where it starts is like, being closed and now you're open. And so I don't want this experience to <laughs> scare you, right? Or, you know, because it, it's scary being up here. Like no sane person in the entire world is going to say this isn't scary. But you know what they said about successful entrepreneurs? There's small amounts of psycho and sociopath within us. They've concluded this because you kind of have to not give a shit about what people think and you have to kind of not be scared to make really big investments into your business. Like no sane person is going to do that. Like a definition of an entrepreneur is making significant amount of investments that are beyond someone's comfort zone. Like that's what entrepreneurism is. And we sign up for that because we're all psychopaths to some level, right? Does that make sense? Okay. What are you taking away? Uh, it's just a lot. I'm still, you know, digesting it. The way I process information is I take it all in and then sort of sort it out throughout the day, right? So I wish I had something great because I know whatever I say, I'll be like, oh, I should have said that, right? But, yeah. Um, yeah, being able to postpone you know, I, I really liked what you said where you're like, hey, let's continue this later. Like, that'd be great. Cause it's, you know, I don't want to end it because like you mentioned, I am open. I am open to all the information and I really want to better myself and people. Yeah, and, and what I want to say for this conversation, what I say for a lot of conversation is, let's just focus here on the events and all the side coaching conversations. Let's leave that till after. This is printed to take you through certain things at certain periods of time. Okay, everything builds off each other. And so I'm sure there's a lot that he can add, okay? But there's also already a diagram and a process put together through this. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Okay. Can we ride the horses? <laughs> Dude, I fucking love you, man. <laughs> I fucking love you, bro. Okay, let's get up the horses. You point